This episode is brought to you by our friends at B of Goodrich. Check them out using the link in the description below. Previously on For a Few Bucks Less. Well, we're on the road. We're leaving our Boulder headquarters and we're on the way towards Telluride. Now, first thing you need to know, I am very, very, very hot. It is like 100 degrees out today. Obviously no air conditioning. So if I may, um, with brown, uh, blue maybe, and red, we are uh, the colors of the Armenian flag. Maybe next time, Andre, you could play along and get a white truck. That way, we got something like kind of patriotic. My temperature gauge on my coolant is going up. Oh God, my transmission's overheating. And it's burning, just a little. At the beginning of this year, we took three trucks, all for $5,000, and took them up and over some of the hardest Colorado terrain. But today, we're gonna find out if you can do the same thing for a few bucks less. That's right, we're here in the San Juans, about to take on one of the most iconic of Colorado passes, Imogene, in three vehicles that we bought for $2,500, or for a few bucks less. So let's find out how the boys are feeling about their chances of making it from Ure all the way to Telluride over Imogene. Confidence level high. My truck, good. Why? Because I've got the VFG KO2s on here, thank God. It's really helped so far. I put it in a four-wheel drive. Success, no problem. I'm feeling so confident, I'm gonna go commando. I mean my hat. But that's all I meant. This is my Jeep Grand Cherokee. It's an 01, it's a WJ, it's got the most aggressive tires of the group, the KM3s, it's the only one with the V8, the only one with heated seats, not that that matters, but I think this is gonna be the best out here on the trail, unless something goes kablooey, which it might, because it's got 230,000 miles, but overall, I don't know, it can't beat the Jeep. I feel great about this run, because I actually brought a pickup truck and not an SUV. It's a Mazda B4000. It's also a Ford Ranger. It's proper and I cannot wait to hit the trail. I've actually never been here on the Imogene Pass and this truck is one with nature. See, it blends in. Just airing down all three vehicles, get a little bit of extra contact patch for uh, the rough terrain out there and of course smooth out that ride. This is a little test of departure angle. This first still dropping on the trail. So let's see which one of you guys has the departure angle and which of these three vehicles doesn't. So Andre, you go first. Also a good test of approach angle. He put that bumper on himself. He was so proud of it and he painted it and everything. Poor guy. It's all right, Nathan, your turn. Let's see if you've got the approach or departure angle to do this pass. Here we go. Thank you, tires, for being sticky. That was pretty good, right? I mean, because nothing scraped. Yeah, what, I'm sorry, what were you saying? Not a damn thing, hell yeah! Wow, that was really good. Nathan's line and his uh, truck, and the truck dude did really well. All right, Tommy, Nathan right now is the winner in this. Let's see what the Jeep can do. You'll see this thing walk this obstacle like it wasn't even there. I mean, if I scrape at all, it's probably Nathan's fault. Oh, look at that. 
Sounds like the Titanic. It sounds like the Titanic. We are sinking in a Grand Cherokee. Here comes a tail, not a scrape. What is it? Nothing. Well, you're about to hit now. It didn't scrape. You're All right. Cut, cut camera. We're good. Let's keep going. <laughs> All right, use that. Made it through without a single touch of the hitch. All right, so not only did Tommy's uh, ass scrape, uh, but it sounded like a moose in heat. <laughs> I hope there's no female moose around here, or we're going to be having moose issues, and this is going to become a very different video. Aside from the fact that my Blazer is the best, I mean, it's, it's already one approach, departure, breakover, awesome four-wheel drive, looks really cool. All those things, awesome. I've been in, Mo in Montrose twice, and I haven't seen a single statue or anything else towards the band Montrose. Someone explain that to me. Riddle me that. Oh, you are getting deep into music lore, Nathan. So deep. Sammy Hagar, Ronnie Montrose. Not a single statue. Uh, that's my only complaint. That and also... Um, Smelling a little gasoline, but it's not me. Hey, what's going on there? The birds, the bees, the beautiful aroma of a distinct Mazda with a hole in its fuel tank, it smells like. Hey guys, this, this Mazda truck is one with nature, like I said. Um, so far, it's, uh, you know, it's twisting okay, not maybe the best uh, suspension travel, but uh, I'm still moving. Look, the fact of the matter is, I am in the biggest vehicle, the comfiest vehicle, the most powerful vehicle with the highest tow rating and I've got heated seats and infinity gold sound. I, I don't know how this could possibly lose this comparison. Actually, um, I, I'm in the, uh, well, I'm in the biggest vehicle with the best sound and most comfy seats, and I think if you combine all the horsepower of all three of those, it would still not equal that of the TRX. Dad, I love you, but the TRX looks ridiculous on this trail. It's too wide, you have to fold the mirrors in, it's too expensive. What you need is a $2,500 beater like what we've got, it, they still got us here in pretty much complete comfort yesterday at 300 miles. And, you know, now we don't have to worry about about on the trail because uh, they're probably less than the cost of the panoramic moonroof in that TRX. Just keep in mind, you may need this TRX further down the trail. So just, you know, keep that little thought in the back of your head before you start dissing it too much. You know what, guys? Roman is absolutely right. This is my first time on Imogene, and I'm loving it. I'm blown away by its beauty, by its variety. Onyx off-road maps rates it at six out of 10. So it is still a fairly difficult trail. So far, it just scraped a little bit on my bumper, but I'm so happy I got a truck because, you know, we were shopping for these for very low amount of money, and I was so happy when I bought this for $2,500 until I found out that I needed a lot of repairs, almost $1,500 of repairs on this truck. But hey, now for about four grand, a few bucks less, uh, it's just wonderful. Oh, this is gorgeous. Gorgeous, is it? Beautiful. Right now, things are perfect. I'm very happy with the way it's going. The only thing I'm concerned about is the possibility of hitting something valuable. But, um, Otherwise, thumbs up. Uh, holy cow, this is a comfortable vehicle. Oh. I know solid axles have a reputation for not having a very good ride quality, but this is just incredibly smooth because the suspension is probably mostly collapsed in the front and part of the rear because it's got 226,000 miles on it, but oh, it is so comfy. And it articulates incredibly well. Look at this, I'm gonna drive on up this little rocky section here checking out the articulation you'll see it on that clampy cam back there pretty good really really good actually all right guys we got these brand new tires let's put them to some uh, good use see if you can make it up this little slick rock section uh, it's going to be a test of tires, it's going to be a test of traction, and a test of articulation. So Andre, you go first. I'm approaching it as slowly as I can. I'm in low. Ooh, that bad, not bad! Cool. 
cool looking, Nathan. It did look very cool. Let's see how the Jeep articulates. Oh, yes. Look at that. What a machine. Hey, guys, you did great. And that's why, you know, the three most important rules of off-roading are what, Nathan? Tires, tires, and tires. No, it's, it's, don't spend money on an expensive vehicle. Don't spend money on expensive parts. Then you don't have to break expensive parts. <laughs> or it could be cojones, but you know. Airbags do you have as we head on up the shelf road? How many what? Airbag. Uh, zero. I have zero airbags. Nathan, how about you? I, I have one. There you have it. I think I've got at least two. And by at least two, I mean two. So that's double yours. But I have a nice cushy steering wheel. It's really nice. Would I take you when you punch off the cliff? No, I'll just be screaming and holding it, and then I'll die. Honestly, I don't think airbags will save you either. Not with that attitude. Guys, I don't know how many more hidden problems my truck has, but I gotta take care of this fuel tank. Seriously. Well, Andre has 99 problems, but his tires ain't one of them. <laughs> See, modern reference. I also have Gen Y Hitch. Wow, that's How's Onyx doing? Onyx is doing great and my hair is looking good thanks to Keefs. How about yours, Nathan? Well, thanks to Roman. Oh, wait a minute. That's a different thing. Never mind. How is that little four liter holding up up here? Oh, it's gorgeous, dude. Uh, I have a 373 rear end with a limited slip and I'm in first gear, like 2000 RPM. And uh, the engine is nice and cool and, and wonderful. Yeah, Nathan and I both have 4.3s and 4.7s respectively. So uh, if you need a push, I think we can muster something. Oh my God, it's straight up there, dude. Oh my, what is going on now? All right, gentlemen, there's the newbie route, which is where I'm standing, it's pretty easy. Or there's the hard route, which is the way the TRX went up. So the hard route is a hard left. The easy route is an easy left. I'll let you decide which way you want to go. Well, this has been um, several months in the making. I'm taking the hard line. All right, well, may the Mazda gods be with you, Andre. Not a Mazda, Ford. <laughs> no problems. Let's do something harder. All right, same choice, Nathan. Hard right, hard left, or easy left. Just go up the hard right. I know you're going to do it anyway. All right, poor Tommy, all up to you. I'm just going to gently crawl it. shall see the amazing power of the 4.7 liter V8 like nothing like nothing was even there and that's what open devs I should mention god I love this Jeep already I mean I I can't say I love it because I'll fall in love with it and then it'll crap out god I appreciate this Jeep to a large extent this is absolutely beautiful you know, guys, this is as picturesque as anything I can imagine at the top of the Swiss Alps. Andre, 
Okay, I gotta say I'm impressed with that Ranger. It's doing everything you've asked it to so far. Yes, but Tommy, I have a question for you. How's that transmission and your engine light for the transmission are uh, doing? You know, surprisingly, Andre, this transmission is really hanging in there in a big way. No issues to report, it's shifting perfectly. I have it locked in first most of the time out here, but um, yeah, actually, really, really pretty pleased with how it's doing. And Nathan, how's your voltmeter and your uh, everything, uh, your coolant? My voltmeter got better when I shut off my radio. I think that says something. My coolant is perfect. It's always been perfect. Everything else is perfect because my car is perfect. It's part of the team. It's a winner. I will say, this is a pretty nasty cliff right next to us. Hey guys, don't, don't worry. It's only a 12 and a half thousand foot drop. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, as it gets higher and higher, we're hitting bigger and bigger rocks. Guys, I'm staring up a straight wall up ahead of us. Which way do I go? The hardest way. Just coming up, Andre. Sound good. You see anything? I'm smelling something, so we'll see. Stressful to watch. Even more stressful now that I have to try it. First gear, low range. Don't have the clearance to bounce up like those two did, so I'm just gonna try to crawl it. Come on, Jeep. This is where the weight's hurting me. There we go. Nice work, Tommy. That's what you Right. So I just have to say that the Ranger, I mean, uh, the Mazda did it in one go. Just one go, that's it. That means it's the best truck out of all these three. Yeah, because you floored it. I gotta say, worry about Nathan. He's, he's underneath this truck. Good. Did someone shut this off? Are you, is it okay, Nathan? Yeah. Uh. Uh -huh. uh, something was steaming a little bit here the transfer case. Sounds good. No, it shut off on its own. Yeah? Yeah, I wasn't in here. It was running. It shut off. It shut off. <sighs> it's not liking it, that's for sure. Well, we are we are almost at the top. So It's still in four-wheel drive. Yeah. All right, so I, I say um, this time you guys go up first, and I'll follow behind. So if something happens, I can pull you up the rest of the way, okay? push us up the rest of the way, I think. All right, all right. All right, boys, uh, let's finish this up, huh? We're almost, yeah. We're almost at the summit.
Nathan, it's hard to imagine this, but I think our cheap rigs have made the summit. I love the fact that we're driving past vehicles. I mean, even side-by-sides that cost, what, three to five times as much as our vehicles? I mean, what the hell? These things are cheap and capable. I'm thrilled with the performance of all three of these. Uh, this trip, to my mind, was the most spectacular one we've done in the series. I agree because it was done affordably. I agree because it was done beautifully. I mean, it's gorgeous up here. I agree because nothing broke. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm thinking, gentlemen, that you guys made it look too easy. So, for a few bucks less, it might be even more interesting. What? No. No. Please. Come on. Yeah. I'm thinking a thousand dollars next time. Oh God. <laughs> you can do it, Tommy. Oh jeez, Dad. And I think we're gonna call the next series. Yeah. F and cheap. Wow. <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. <laughs> but we still have to decide one thing. Which of the three is the best budget rig for 2,500 bucks? Nathan, make your argument first. My argument is unnecessary because all you guys saw the fact that my approach, my departure, my breakover angle were the best. I scampered, as you said, in and around rocks. Yes, okay, it was a little high centered in one spot, but that was my fault for being overzealous with the accelerator. And I wasn't making gas, and I didn't have any codes coming up saying, your transmission's gonna blow! So I'm good, I'm uh, winning. Andre, what do you think? Well, I think that I was mid-pack through this series, but what put me on top was the last section, the climbing section, where I just did it in one go. Well, put Andre on the top is that he spent four grand instead of two and a half grand. So for that, I think that the WJ Grand Cherokee is the best. First of all, it's not the shape of brown. Second of all, it doesn't look like it's gonna fall over every time you take a turn. And third of all, it's got red tow hooks. All right, so I'm a yeah, I'm adjudicator. adjudicator. All right, so yours is the stinkiest and the ugliest and it is. the least off-road worthy because you have almost zero articulation with those big tires. So I'm going to give you the biggest hard award, but the worst off-road. Now yours, Nathan, yours is the cutest. It's got cute. It's got the most gumption, right? The most scramble. Yeah. But. It's still not as good as Tommy's. What? Yeah, yeah. which is the most off-road worthy, but also the most problematic because you're always worried about your transmission. So uh, you, you, you get the most heart, you get the most gumph, and you get the most balls. Uh, that, that, that is inaccurate, but I think it's time to close it up. It sounds like there's a swarm of bees coming up from behind us. And we'll see you next time on another episode of the Fastlane Truck. Yeah, it's gonna be effing cheap. I would say the best for the price that was spent would have been the Jeep. And what you can see here is that he's added screws for things in the past. You can see what kind of a mess this is. It's terrible mess. Nice work, Andre. Oh God, my transmission's overheating. And it's burning, just a little.